Hello again and welcome to yet another Wilson 18 Ubuntu server tutorial. In the current series we've been talking about the Ubuntu server and how we can set it up and configure it to become a web server and have other features such as the SSH server um, install things like PHP and my admin and hopefully going on to talking about how we can make it a little bit more secure than just a standard LAMP server. So in this video we'll be talking about how we can set it up so that it will respond to more than one domain so in essence it will be hosting multiple sites off the same host or off the same server. If you wanted to check out a written guide of how you can do this I've also done one so if you go over to wilson18.com and then go to the how to section and scroll down you'll see there's a how to host multiple sites on one web server using Ubuntu server 12.4 so if you click that and if you read through that it'll help you a little bit and it's also got um, all the commands on there if you're not too sure so just in the in this video um, to, to test this out and to make sure it's working correctly I'm going to be configuring the host file on the on my Windows PC so that whenever I actually type in a website it'll go to my computer um, obviously if you've got your own domain set up then you can do it with them but just to make this a little bit easier I will be doing it through the host file so as we can see here the first thing we need to do is go on the start menu and run a notepad as administrator so if we go to the start menu and type in notepad and then click right click and click run as administrator and notepad opens up so what we now need to do is go to file and then open and if you just start it up on my computer and then you can go to local disk or the C wherever your operating system is installed and then go to the Windows section and then scroll down to system 32 and then drivers and then etc and then if you change the um, document type to all files then you can find a host file, if you double click that it should open so to actually get the host file so that whenever we type in a, a web address it will come to um, a specific IP address what we need to do is we first need to type in the IP address so you can type in the IP address of your server if you've already got it configured so that when you go to your external IP address it will point to your web server then you can use your external IP address or if you haven't got that sorted yet because you're just keeping it local for testing purposes then you can type in the internal IP address so mine's on 10.0.0.150 and after that you type in the IP, uh, the actual domain name so for this I'm just going to be doing test1.com and just so we've got another website to test around as well I'm going to be doing the same thing and then the website of test2.com So if we do that and click uh, Control S to save it, or if you go to File and Save, then you can do so, and then click Exit. If for any reason that didn't work and you got an error saying that you need to be an admin to save it, or would you like to save it in your documents instead, or something like that, then it's because you didn't run the, the run Notepad as an administrator, and that's why. Um, so if you just make sure you run it as administrator, it should work fine for you. So I'm just going to pause the video and I'll get my server set up. I will be do recording this on a virtual machine just to speed stuff up a bit and make it easier for recording. But I'll see you in a couple of seconds. So once your server's loaded up, you need to log in. And the first thing we need to do is we need to change the current directory um, to where the website is is normally hosted which is um, var and then www but to actually change the directory uh, you type in cd 
so that's change directory and then the location you'd like to change to so that is that um, so you click enter and that should change your directory so the first stage of this we need to create the directories we want to actually host our websites in so I obviously for me I, I think the most logical way to do this is to have a directory for each website we're going to create so to actually create the directories we need to run this as an administrator so to do that we need to type in sudo so that's super user do and to actually make the directory the command is mkdir so that stands for make directory and the next thing we do is type the directory name and because we've already changed the directory we don't have to do the full path we can just type it in so the directory we're first going to be creating is test1 obviously if you've got your own domain sorted then you can use that, that's fine um, so we type in sudo make directory test1 and click enter that should then ask you for your password because you run it as an administrator and that should create the directory so we can do that again for test2 and another directory we're going to be creating is for the logs and this is just for the web logs so you can make sure you've um, got that sorted so if anything goes wrong you've got something to refer back to so we're going to be creating a directory called logs Click enter. and just to make sure those directories have been created um, the command to actually view the contents of the directory is ls so if you type in ls then it'll list all the files in that directory so we can see we've got the index file the log file test1 and test2 the next thing we need to do is to copy the index file into each of the test folders the main reason for this is it's just so that when we try and access these in five or so minutes time there's something actually in the file so we can distinguish between the two pages so to copy these uh, the index file across we need to type in cp uh, sudo sorry so that's super user do and then cp which is copy then the file we want to copy so that's index.html and then the directory of uh, the dire directory sorry we want to move it to so that's test1 and we're also going to be doing the same for test2 obviously the files at present are the same so what we need to do is we need to change the file just so we can tell which is which so to type that we need to type in sudo so that's running it as an administrator then the name or uh, sorry <laughs> the editor we're going to be using to actually edit the file so that's nano uh, so it's sudo nano and then the file that we're changing so that is test1 and then slash and then index.html so here we can see this is the default page for the website so we can change this to default page and then for uh, and test1.com and then to save that it's control O and then enter and then control X and by the way if you find a quick way of doing that please comment below and I'll love you forever <laughs> so um, the next thing we need to do is edit the secondary file so we can type in the command again but this time change it the directory to test2 and we can go across and change that to default web page for test2.com control x uh, control o uh, enter control x so what we've done so far is we've created the directory for each of the websites we've changed the index file inside of it so we can distinguish between the two files and the last thing we need or well the next thing we need to do is edit the um, available sites page this is just the file that tells um, the server where to look for particular websites so to do this we need to type in sudo and then nano 
and then etc apache2 and then apache2 and then sites available and then default obviously make sure you check the um the video for what I'm typing don't listen to what I'm saying so obviously sometimes I speak a lot of bollocks but um as well if you want something to look at instead of wanting to look at the video you can follow the guide that I've written as well so once you've typed that in click enter and what we need to do now is just delete everything it's always I, I find this is it's better to just start from the beginning then we, we know what's gone in there and it, it's pretty simple anyway it's I think it's only about 10 15 lines of code it's pretty simple right so once that's done we need to type in name uh, sorry <laughs> name virtual host space asterisk enter and then virtual host asterisk close again make sure you type in this word for word and if you want in something to refer to or if you actually want in to cheat and make this a little bit easier so you have to type everything out you can um, I found you can SSH into the server edit this file but if you're using putty you can actually um, right click and it'll paste so if you wanted to copy the file off of my website and change the server name so that the correct obviously then that'll do everything you need and it saves you having to type stuff out and it, it means that you don't make errors but if you're doing it directly into the server then just do what I'm doing and make sure it's correct so next line is server name I'm going to apologise for any of the typing mistakes I make. I'm a bit off today, but anyway. So it's server name and then the website. So this is telling it what it's going to respond to. So it's test1.com. And then we're going to give it an alias so that if you actually do the www.test1.com, it'll also respond to it. So it's server alias and then www.test1.com then we need to choose where the documents are stored so you type in document root and then the location for where they are stored Then you type in custom log. And this is just saying where we're going to be storing the logs. So that's var www logs and then test site no test one dot log and then at the end of it you have to type in combined and then type in error log you can specify these to be different locations but I'm just going to be combining it all so again you type in where you want to store the log and we're finished with that for now so we type in virtual We'll close it off by doing virtual host and we type the same as above but obviously this time we we'll change it to test2.com
So server name test2.com server alias www.test2.com document root and the custom log for www logs and then test two dot log and then make sure you do the combined at the end and then error log logs test two dot log and once we've done that we can close it off so to close it off we do virtual first Make sure we do the backslash. And that should work. So if we do control O, enter to save it, and then control X, and we can then restart the service. So to restart the service, you type in sudo, so that will run it as administrator, and then service, and then the name of the service, which is Apache 2 and then restart because we want to restart it so if we do that and click enter and if you get any log if you get any errors um, then it it will say on what line the error is or if there's any problems with it then it will say but if you see the same thing as I am then it's worked fine so to actually test that we can open up a web browser and go to test1.com and as we can see it says default web page for test1.com and we can also check test2.com just in case you wanted to make sure it's worked and you can see it's still working so um, sorry if I <laughs> made um, too many mistakes in that video but hopefully you got the gist of it and you understood everything if you didn't understand anything or it didn't work or you got any questions then leave the um, some comments below and I'll make sure I get back to you and if, if you just want to ask me something or if you've got any requests for videos then again do so below and I'll get back to you but if, if you like the video and it was quite useful then please like and subscribe make sure you you go on Facebook and like us because um, we always have lists our new videos on there we list our new products on there so if there's anything you want to get your hands on which is cheap and very good quality then make sure you check it out on there and I'll you'll find it on there you also get um, a list of our, any discounts we're offering at the time and it, it's just quite useful to follow us but um, I, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one which we will be talking about how we can set up an FTP to the website as well as other security tips to actually help your website out. So again, thank you for watching hopefully I'll see you again soon.